Hey everyone, Jeremy here. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast Launch Diaries, where every week I break down exactly what I'm doing to launch my new show, Build a Better Wellness Biz. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing how I'm using Descript plus another transcription tool and why I'm using both of those uh, to help in the production process of the show, as well as a whole bunch more updates. So let's get into it. All right, so we are in week eight, which means there are, I mean, less than three weeks to launch. Uh, it's currently August 14th, and the show is launching September 1st, so it is about two and a half weeks uh, away from the launch, and that is uh, starting to feel pretty tight, and there's still a lot of stuff that needs to come together, so I think uh, this upcoming week is going to be a big one, uh, and I'm really gonna need to hustle next week in order to get everything in place in terms of the solo episodes and some of those types of things, but uh, we're not gonna worry about that until next week. Hopefully I will have lots to update you on there uh, when it comes to the next episode, uh, but this week I did get some big things done, or at least started on, and, and some of these things, the teaser episode and finishing off the first interview edit took a lot longer than I was thinking. So. Let's jump over to the time tracking report here in Toggle. And uh, as you can see, we've got uh, 17 hours, almost 17 and a half hours uh, logged this past week on the podcast compared to the previous week that was at 11 and a half. So quite a big jump here. And if we look at the breakdown here, you'll see that the teaser episode scripting and editing, uh, that has taken five hours. So this is one of my big goals for the past week. I wanted to get the teaser episode done I did not get close to done, but I put five hours into it and I think what's remaining is going to be much easier. And so um, basically what that looked like, this is where I was using Descript and um, another transcription tool called otter.ai to find relevant clips, part of the teaser episode. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute here once we get done with the, the, the time tracking stuff here. But basically I wanted to pull clips from the interviews I'd done um, and weave those into the teaser episode. And so deciding which clips and what order and all that kind of stuff I wanted to use and then finding the clips, going through all the audio files, getting everything transcribed, that took a lot of time. And so that uh, I think that bit is now done and I'm hopeful that uh, the rest of the teaser episode will be maybe another hour or two just to script it and record it and, uh, and send it out. So um, yeah, hopefully that is, the bulk of the work is done there and next week I'll just be able to, to knock that out. Um, you can also see this is um, this Abel James, this was editing. And so I'd previously spent, I think, three hours doing the, that initial edit last week where I shared some of that. And that was maybe three to four hours there. So now total that is uh, quite a bit of time. And if we look over, uh, I've got another report open here. So this is just for his interview here. We can see we're over 10 hours, almost 10 and a half hours on uh, just this one episode uh, when it comes to interview prep and research, then doing the interview itself, and then the post-production, and there's still gonna be content repurposing and things like that. So this is uh, this is a, a lot of work, a lot of time has gone under this, and I'm gonna show you a bit of, of that as well. And uh, I am producing this show at a higher level than I normally might for, uh, or most of our clients might for their normal podcast, just because uh, I, I do want this to be a showcase of what our agency can do. And so I, I want this to be, you know, really, pretty slick. Um, so I'm going to show you what that's looking like later on in this episode as well, but it is taking some time. I'm hopeful that when it comes to the editing, at least I can cut off three hours uh, per episode, at least going forward. A lot of this was finding music and which that, you know, that's now done and uh, just getting into the flow of things with when it comes to editing and how I'm going to actually go through this process. And uh, we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So that took a bunch of time as well. Those two things. Then I did an interview, some interview prep and um, the uh, podcast launch diaries, editing and production, everything from last week. So that was uh, this week. The main things were the editing and some of the creative stuff here are both around editing and the teaser episode. So uh, before we jump into uh, Pro Tools and have a look at both of those episodes and how everything's coming together there, let's just jump over to the goals uh, that I had set out from last week. So create lead magnet slides. This, I did not create the slides. I scripted some of it out in uh, Workflowy, which is where I, my, my note taking app. So I've, I didn't complete that task, but I got some of it done. I made some progress on it. And so hopefully next week I can pretty quickly knock that out. Uh, that is the goal. 
Uh, the music, the ongoing saga of my theme music, uh, if you'll recall from earlier episodes, I had reached out to a, a musician and composer to create some custom theme music and I was really excited about the, the direction it was taking uh, after an initial first draft that I was like, mm, not so much. Uh, he came up with a re revision that I really liked, a different kind of theme and I was working on that right after I finished recording last week's episode, I got an email from him that uh, he had been off work, I think uh, furloughed uh, due to COVID and he had been called back into a new position now that starts like immediately and he also needed to move. And uh, so he was like, basically, I have to put this on hold until you know mid-September um, when I can get to it. I totally understand if you need it sooner and it's it won't work. And uh, unfortunately, that's the, the case I'm in where I kind of did need uh, the music to get everything finished off. I didn't want to switch songs after five episodes or something like that. So um, I decided I'm not going to go with the custom music that uh, I would like to explore that in the future. That is something that sounds really interesting to me uh, just to figure out how it works and get something really custom made for the show. But Maybe after episode 100 or something like that, that'll be the the, uh, the rebrand, re re theme music uh, celebration uh, milestone there. So we'll see. For now, I'm going with stock music and uh, from Artlist, which I've mentioned before. I have a, a subscription for them, and that is a $200 a year unlimited music subscription. So if you are using a lot of music, that is a great option. And I do have an affiliate link uh, in the notes for this episode. So um, I don't, I think you get a discount if you use it. I think I get like a free month or something if you use it. I don't even really know what the deal is, but um, I love that. And I've been a subscriber for a few years now and I do use a lot of music, both for clients as well as for my own projects. And so it is definitely very helpful if you are creating projects with a lot of music. So I would definitely check that out. There are a few other similar um, stock music libraries where it's a subscription basis as well, but uh, I do like Artlist. Uh, so I think with that, the music is finalized now. So that's great. Um, in terms of the first episode edit, this is pretty much done. We're, like I said, we're gonna get into that in a second. Uh, all I'm waiting on is basically the, um, I, I need to finish the lead magnets because there's gonna be an ad for it. And so I need to know how I'm actually gonna present it, what it's gonna be called, all that kind of stuff. But other than that, everything is finished on the first episode other than I just need to do a final mix through it. So um, once, once I have that uh, last bit recorded, then I'll just do the final mix and master and polish it off and it'll be good to go. So I'm calling that pretty much done. Uh, the script and recording the teaser episode. So this is, like I said, it's half done, uh, hopefully more than half done in terms of time, even though only a minute of it, I put five hours and come out with a minute of audio. Um, so that is, uh, there's still some work to do there, but I did make a lot of progress and that ended up taking a lot longer than I was thinking it was going to. And then uh, sending guest postcards. This was something that I did. I still have more to send out, but um, I did get through a, a batch of guests on the show and have sent out postcards for them. And I've actually heard back from some of them that they've got it and they were uh, really appreciative. So um, that's always, always good to hear. All right, so let's jump over into Pro Tools and look at the teaser episode here. So let's just take a listen through and then I'll show you uh, how I came up with this. And it's just a minute, a uh, little section that I've got. It's so much fun for us to feel like every day we sit at our desk, what will we do directly contributes to a greater cause. Welcome to Build a Better Wellness Biz. We're asking the question, when it comes to your online wellness business, what does better really look like? Quality over quantity. Giving back and making the world a better place that as we are blessed, we bless others. The willingness to burn down what isn't working. We have three choices, right? Get worse, stay the same, or get better. If what you're doing is making the world worse, just notice that. I've noticed that a couple times in my life. I think that we have an obligation to make massive amounts of money because we're going to do good things with it. Take care of our community, knowing that our community is not just our employees and our independent contractors, but also our clients and our community at large. To help other people, to encourage other people, to challenge other people, to speak life into other people. All right, so as you can see, that's uh, just at about the minute mark there, and this took five hours to find all these clips, pull them, edit them, all that kind of stuff, and put them together. Uh, I'm 
really loving how it's coming together and I'm really excited to finish off the teaser episode. Uh, the teasers are, are probably my favorite thing to work on just because you can kind of get creative with the music and with uh, clip pl placements and all that kind of stuff in the scripting. So um, this is something that uh, I'm just having a lot of fun working on and uh, I'm really happy with how it's coming together so far. So basically we have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 interviews so far that I've done um, with clips that are going to appear in this teaser. And that is a lot of audio. Each episode was about an hour. So we're looking at like 11 hours of audio to go through and find uh, these clips that I wanted. And so when I was coming up with the teaser, obviously the, the title Build a Better Wellness Biz, that was the, I was kind of thinking about like, how, how do I want to hook people in like every, every every intro to every episode should have a hook and the teaser as the hook as as basically the hook to the whole series needs to have a really strong hook and so I thought part of that was like well what what does better mean what does better look like and so that is what I wanted to start off with and uh, I was actually listening to a teaser uh, I can't remember it's um, I think a new Gimlet show about uh, climate change science and that type of thing and they put out a teaser this week and I was listening to that and got some inspiration from how they structured it and was listening to a bunch of other teaser episodes as well. And so I like that kind of like starting off with a clip from an episode and then having a prompt from the uh, host, which is, in this case is me, and then having letting the other guests kind of tease some of the interviews that are to come and also tease the content of the show as a whole, the viewpoint of the show and what listeners are going to take away. And so I'm really happy with how this is coming together, but it took a long time. So, um, and I've got a bunch of other, like these were all the, all of this stuff over here is all stuff that I thought was good potential clips. And some of this I will use. This stuff um, I will all use at the end of the, the teaser. And that's all kind of sequenced there, but not that cleanly. And then there's a bunch of just other good quotes from episodes that are like really great. And I, I just wanted to include all of these in them because they're so great, but it would have been a 15 minute long teaser episode then. So you'll just have to listen to the actual episodes. Um, so that was a, a little bit difficult in like narrowing it down to keep it short and punchy and still get some of those great clips in there that I'm excited to share. So the process for me was I use uh, this tool called otter.ai and this is an AI automatic transcription tool. So I think I pay $10 a month or something like that and get 6,000 minutes of transcription. So it's quite a bit and we use this for our, our, a bunch of our clients and then I use it as well. And so I, it used to be free and there may still be some uh, free transcription tools out there. Otter was the only one that I knew of uh, that was actually free and now it's paid, but uh, it, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And for, for $10 a month, it's a pretty great deal. It's not, you know, 100% uh, correct, but it does a pretty good job. And so what, basically what I like to do is in this case, I, I talked, I've talked a little bit before about how I've structured some of my interviews to include certain questions that are never even going to make it into the interview. They're just for social sharing or they're just for specific questions or something, something like that. And so I knew that I asked specific questions, um, that were going to play into the teaser episode and kind of talk about certain topics there. So I just, uh, got the episodes, all the episodes, all 11 episodes transcribed. And then I just scrolled through to where I asked, um, in this case, I was looking for one of the questions is, you know, what does better mean to you? And so I would just search, uh, better and then it's usually near the end. And so, yeah, here I have my question about what does, what does better look like for you? And so here's, I can just scan through this and see if there's anything worth pulling there. And some of the people had stuff worth pulling and some people didn't. Uh, one of the, one of the other questions I asked was what is the responsibility of business owners to the broader communities? And so, uh, I also, that was a, a couple questions up from this. And so then I just look through here and try and find that question and see if there was anything good there. I didn't scan through the entire transcripts um, by any means. So basically from these, I uh, identified all of these and obviously they have the timestamps here. So it's easy to find uh, once I, I've identified those clips. And so I would uh, take out or, or identify in the transcript where the clips were, the quotes that sounded good to me. And then in the audio file, I would import them into Pro Tools and I would have all the, the long files here and just clip out those bits that I wanted and uh, paste them as you can see in these like segments. Here's like a 20 second clip. Um, you know, here's another 15 second. So some of them were a bit longer, some were super short. And uh, so that's how I identified those. Then basically I just created, I think it was about, 
I don't know, maybe like five minutes of audio of all these clips just back to back to back to back to back. And they were all really good clips. And so I was like, I kind of want to use all of these. Uh, and it might have even been longer than that. It might have been like eight minutes or something like that. But it, it was a lot of clips, more than I was actually going to use in the teaser. And so I identified all those. I just exported, I lined them up like this and exported all of them uh, into an audio file. And then I imported that audio file into Descript. And so, of course, I could have also uploaded that um, audio file back to Otter, but I like Descript because you can edit it more and you can make highlights and things like that. So it's a bit nicer to work with uh, as a tool. The, the problem with Descript, why I didn't do all the episodes in there, is that you have to pay more like per minute. And because Otter is just $10, $10 a month flat rate, I could load all 11 hour long episodes to there and not have to worry about it where I would have had to pay more for Descript. So if if I had the Descript credits, I would just do everything in here probably um, because I think it is a better tool and you can do cool stuff with, you know, actually editing the audio right in here. It's not high quality editing. There are, you know, pops and, and, and stuff like that when the edits aren't perfect, let's say. And uh, so I won't always, I, I will actually never edit audio in here. I would much prefer to use Pro Tools, but uh, it is cool for just putting scripts together and things like that. So then again, I, I imported everything into here and then I just scanned through it and tried to find the most relevant um, clips that I thought were the strongest for the teaser. And then one of the other things that I did here at the end, so this is gonna be a part of the, go at the end of the, um, the end of the episode, and this will be all, um, well, I'll just play through it and you can hear what it's going to be like. But. We're able to make a daily impact. That's actually not the one I'm thinking of, I don't think. This is the one over here, maybe. Yeah, okay. This is what's going to go at the end. Doing, getting, growing, giving, supporting, striving, wanting, working, knowing, serving, being, scaling, learning, building, 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 building better, 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 better. better. So that editing is pretty choppy right now, but it's just a rough uh, layout there. So that's gonna be the last thing you hear in the teaser episode. And so for those, I wanted like ING words at the end, like uh, we have like learning, working, doing, thinking, uh, building. And so basically out of all these, everything here in Descript, I just searched uh, ING, actually that's, how can we find in here? No, I thought I did it a different way before, but interesting. <laughs> well, I did it uh, somehow differently earlier. Search in composition. All right. Well, they actually, I think I updated to a new version since I was actually editing in here earlier this week. And there's even another new version as we can see now. So basically I just searched through here for all these ING words and it was like, okay, doing, being good. Those are all like trying. Um, those are all words that were gonna fit in that context. So I just like scanned through and found all of these. And I think there was like 50 some or however many it shows here, 78. So I just scanned through that and picked out, you know, for each person I picked one or two of those that uh, would, would work for that. And so that's how I was thinking about that. And uh, I'm really excited for that to come together and be put to music and uh, kind of be the payoff after the, the teaser has built up to that kind of. So uh, that is kind of how the teaser is coming together. I'm excited to finish that off next week. Uh, these clips, I think, are all other clips that will go in throughout the episode, but um, most of what will come will be my uh, narration. And so that's actually something that I, uh, while thinking about how to script this, I've created this um, teaser episode best practices and framework here. Uh, so if you are creating a teaser episode um, for your own coming up, then I would recommend just looking through this and I basically laid out how you should write the teaser. So here's a bunch of guidelines and then here is basically a fill in the blank uh, script for uh, or way to script your teaser. So welcome to whatever the podcast name is, a podcast helping who your target audience is, achieve whatever the transformation is. I'm your host, whatever. And I started the show because on the show we're going to be covering and we're gonna do this by, and so we've got all the supporting text here uh, telling you what to, to put in there. Uh, if you're tired of, you know, whatever the audience's frustration is and are ready to make that transformation, then this show is for you. New episodes will be published, you know, whatever the publishing schedule is, subscribe, Apple Podcasts, and so on. So that is a pretty, I think, solid way to just get a, a good teaser episode. A lot of times people ask me like, what should be in a teaser episode? I'd, I'd never heard of a teaser episode. I would say as well, 
I recommend everybody do a teaser episode, even if you're 100 episodes into your podcast, because I like to put these all over the place uh, on my website. I want to have a really like three minute, three to five minute long way for people to get a taste of the podcast um, and have that really prominently available because it's unlikely that somebody's going to go to your website if they're unfamiliar with you and listen to a 60 minute long episode. But they probably will listen to a three minute episode to get a taste of it. And if you can hook them in that three minutes, they're much more likely to actually explore the show further. So that's why I like to even if you already have 100 episodes out, you don't have a teaser episode, create one, use this framework. There's a link to copy it. And so you can use it for yourself uh, in the description below this video and uh, go ahead and fill in the blanks and uh, create a teaser episode and put that on your website, put that at the top of your podcast page, um, share that on social media, make audiograms out of it. And uh, it's just having that like short, concise bit um, that is hopefully a really good hook into the rest of the, the podcast can be really helpful in your marketing and promotion. So uh, I would definitely recommend doing that and please steal my framework and, uh, and use that for yourself. All right, so let's jump back into Pro Tools. And here we are in the first interview um, with Abel James, the one that I've been talking about that's um, had 10 hours of work go into it so far. Uh, this one is pretty much finished. And so we've got, um, the, the interview here, I've got some uh, track for some clips from Abel. And then I've got, uh, this is all my like voiceover interstitials narration. And so as you can see here, um, this is the, the main interview, these uh, purple clips here. But then I've also broken it up with a couple of uh, interstitials to kind of segue between sections. And so that's something that I feel like it is higher production value. Um, it allows me, even in the interview, sometimes I'm thinking like, okay, I want to talk about this before we get into this next question, but I don't want to say that now because that's going to take us down another rabbit hole. So in my mind, I'll just make a little flag and be like, okay, I need to record something there that will give some context and, and then segue into that next section. So what that looks like here, and then I put some music behind it. Um, so let's just have a quick listen through this. No one can find you. And I've seen that happen to a lot of good people, including us on different platforms. Critique of the nearly unchecked power and influence of the tech platforms we use and often rely on to run our online businesses is a recurring theme in a lot of Abel's work, from his social media posts to his poetry. If you're not familiar with what he's talking about when he refers to shadow banning and censorship, consider yourself lucky. In recent years, Google has made a number of algorithm changes that have caused previously high-ranking sites, specifically in the diet space, with massive amounts of helpful content and credibility from people who really do know what they're talking about to almost drop off the map entirely. This has happened to a number of our clients and has also happened to Abel. I was curious for someone with so much going for him and his brand, what the effect had been on him. We've gotten crushed, to be honest, totally crushed. So that's kind of how those interstitials are working for me. Give some background. And for me personally, like part of these, um, being able to speak a little bit more at length. One of the things that can happen with an interview show is that uh, we've had a lot of clients where if if one of your goals is to establish yourself as the expert, if you're not really careful about it, oftentimes you can push people to the guests and really highlight them too much and nobody views you as the expert or the authority and comes back to your products or services or anything like that. We've seen this happen with a number of clients who, uh, when we've started working with them, a lot of times they've had shows on their, their own and then we've started working with them and, and found ways to help them establish themselves as the expert and the authority authority, even in the interviews. And so this is something for me that I want to make sure that when people are listening, like I come across as someone who knows what they're talking about and uh, as a source to be trusted when it comes to marketing and growing an audience and those types of things. And so I definitely want to share some of my own opinions and insights um, while sharing the guests and while also kind of positioning what the guests are saying in a way that is uh, relatable to my audience and is, you know, if they don't know, because Abel kind of talks on a high level here in this case about censorship and shadow banning and all these things. And if you have never heard of those things, you may not know what that is. And so giving some of that background context can be really helpful. And so there's a couple of those interstitials uh, throughout. I didn't want to go crazy with it. I did want to leave a healthy amount of uh, just, you know, the standard interview here. So you can see here's still all my responses um, just in, in the actual interview itself, like these little ones here, that's me. Uh, and so there is a balance of those and these interstitial cutaways. And then they have some, some music behind them. Um, let's see what else we got. So here we got the outro. That's all good to go. This is just where this ad is going to go for the lead magnet, but that's not recorded. So uh, I need to, to finish off that there. And then with the intro, I'm 
really, again, excited and happy about how this is coming together here. Uh, I did a similar thing as with the teaser pulled clips from the, um, the, throughout the episode. And so let's just have a listen through that. Bad things work better online. A lot of marketing is meant to poke holes in someone, make them feel worse about themselves, like they're nothing unless they have your product. Welcome to Build a Better Wellness Biz. I'm your host, Jeremy Enns. I don't really know what to do with that except for make fun of it and dance with it a little bit and throw some playfulness into this whole situation because it gets really dark. In this episode, I'm talking with Abel James, a New York Times bestselling author, founder of Wild Superfoods and creator of the Fat Burning Man podcast. Abel's had a lot of success in a ton of different fields, winning awards and recognition for his books, podcast, reality TV show, app, songwriting, poetry, and more. As you might imagine, we cover a lot of ground in this episode, including the challenges online health and wellness businesses are currently facing when it comes to censorship, shadow banning, and SEO. We thought that it was to some degree a meritocracy. And after having one of the biggest TV shows and one of the biggest like online diets and the biggest podcasts and the biggest apps all at the same time, and then Google's like, no. I'm like, what did we do? As well as how to view showing up and doing the work in your business, even when you're not seeing results. It's not always that fun. There's a big delay between the time that we do the work and the time that it pays off. But maybe most importantly of all, we talk about our role as business owners in marketing our products and services responsibly. I think we're all here to work on our soul and learn something. So if what you're doing is making the world worse, just notice that. I've noticed that a couple times in my life. As you heard in the intro, it's often quicker to abuse your audience and take shortcuts. But as Abel proves, that's not the only way to build a business, and it's certainly not the way to build a better business. You'll hear Abel's frustration when he talks about how you can put in the work and do things the right way for a long time. But then, with the switch of an algorithm, you can all but disappear entirely. While this episode ventures into some dark, almost hopeless territory at times, in the end, Abel offers a solution for moving forward. The way that we will get through this stronger is by building our way out of it together. And that's through collaboration. When you allow a little bit more of yourself to be seen, and when you put that out there, the other people who are more like you are attracted to that. To start off the interview, I wanted to know how someone who's had so much success in so many different areas defines himself. Most likely creator. So that's uh, the intro for this episode. And again, like I'm always thinking about, and I think that this is really important for podcasters, creators of any kind, whether you're writing or YouTubing or anything, I have not uh, got this down with these YouTube videos yet, but uh, to think in hooks, like what is going to grab people early on and pull them through the episode. And so basically, uh, this is one of the things we talk about a lot in Podcast Marketing Academy in, in one of the lessons and segments is creating open loops. So all of these clips basically create an open loop where it's like, oh, this is going to come later and you get a little bit of a tease of it, but you have to listen through to close that loop and get the answer uh, to whatever idea was presented here in the intro. So that's how I'm thinking about this. And that's something that I, I highly recommend, whether that's just one clip that you put at the start of the episode, like a 20 second clip, or you're going more in depth and you know going to cut out a whole bunch of different areas from the episode and, and put them like this. You can do that however you want. This is definitely more work, as I'll tell you. Uh, I spend a lot of time putting this together, um, but I'm I'm really happy with how it's coming together, and I think it sounds really professional. It's really engaging, and I hope it's going to hold people's attention through the episode. Um, after putting this one together, I'm a bit like, oh man, how how can I live up to this level of of intrigue every episode? Because Abel was a fantastic interview and is a, a really deep thinker about a lot of topics and uh, a real philosopher with a lot of opinions as well. So uh, he he had a lot to say and a lot of interesting stuff uh, so we'll, we'll see how the rest of them go I think this one was maybe a little bit less on the actionable side and a lot of the, the upcoming interviews are gonna be more like here's exactly how to do this and so I think there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for uh, pulling out engaging tidbits from that as well for the intros so that is uh, how this episode is kind of coming together here and I just wanted to show you for the uh, the uh, interstitials here basically my room that I'm recording in you may be able to hear it on my mic it's like a 15 foot by 10 foot uh, by, well, it's pretty tall ceilings, uh, maybe like 15 foot ceiling. So it, it's a uh, square room that is very echoey, not the best situation, all hard walls, concrete walls for recording. So I uh, came up with a little improvised 
uh, vocal recording booth. <laughs> Tried to get as much soft stuff around me here yesterday as I was doing this. So uh, laptop case and backpack and uh, had all these natural diffusers and plants uh, behind me there, which actually listening through, it did make a quite a noticeable difference. So sometimes you got to get creative. I, I think next time I'm going to bring like a jacket or something. I might even try and buy some couch cushions or something uh, to bring to the office and make a little make do uh, vocal booth around my mic because I listened through the first time and uh, after just having my plane set up like I have now and I was like, ooh, okay, you can, you can definitely hear that, especially once you put the compression on and some of the other signal processing. So yeah, I'm getting creative and uh, it seemed to actually work pretty well. So uh, we'll, we'll try to keep improving that as the episodes go on. All right, so as we're looking ahead to next week, uh, here are some of the goals that I have laid out. I definitely need to get these on these first three solo episodes. The first uh, on launch day, two and a half weeks from now, um, there are going to be two solo episodes and that episode with Able that go live. And like I mentioned last week when I shared my content calendar, I'm looking to do probably two episodes a week to start out. Um, around the launch and so that's gonna be one interview and one solo episode so I definitely need to get moving on the solo episodes I already have those all mapped out at least the topics and I've written about a lot of them before uh, on my blog and so those are just gonna be kind of adapting that to the podcast form so I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna go uh, I have a feeling it could take a bit longer than I think but I've also done some of these in the past where it's just like, oh yeah, I know this stuff and I can just talk on it. So I'm just gonna dig into it and have a few bullet points and that'll be good. So I, I'm gonna try to go that way and have it be more natural and a more kind of personable um, speaking directly to the audience. So that's the goal for those. And I hope to get those first three episodes done early next week, at least recorded, if not uh, entirely finished off editing. The teaser episode needs to be finished because uh, the week after I will want to be submitting that to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all the other platforms that it can get approved before that September 1st launch date. I found that usually it can take, so if we're looking at September 1st is a Tuesday, I'll definitely want to have it submitted by the 25th. I found it can take anywhere from three hours to get approved to up to a week sometimes. So I want to be prepared and in advance and so that everything's ready to go live on launch day. Uh, I want to script and record those lead magnet videos. Um, that is something that you know I wanted to do this week and didn't get to. So uh, that is a going to be really important because I'll need that lead magnet to actually finish off uh, the episodes when I'm putting in ads for that and, and, and telling people to, to go get that and, and download that, sign up for the list. And then uh, repurposing content for initial episodes. So once the Able edit is finished, uh, hopefully very soon, then I will get my show notes writer on my team to do show notes for that. And part of that process is pulling out a bunch of stuff that will lead to um, or help in, with the content repurposing process. And I've talked about that. I've shown you my uh, flow chart in an earlier episode here of Podcast Launch Diaries of how everything's gonna be repurposed. And so that is, uh, I need to get that moving as well because I do want to start teasing that content, sharing some of that stuff leading up to the launch. And then uh, continue to define production SOPs. And as the processes become, uh, as I start doing them more and more often, just getting those written down so that when the time comes to hand off some of these tasks, uh, I'm able to do that. And so uh, looking at like the time that I'm spending on the editing, I don't know that editing is ever going to be something that I'll be able to hand off. Uh, perhaps part of it, uh, maybe an initial edit, but that is a lot of time uh, to commit to it. So I do have some concern, let's say, about whether I'll be able to keep this up uh, at that level of production for the next three years. <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Maybe the level of production will lower. Maybe it's just a matter of uh, getting far enough in advance uh, with the episodes that it's not, you know, there is some lee leeway and, and some movement in the schedule where it's not like I'm, you know, next week to week uh, needing to get everything edited. And probably as well, I may down the road uh, switch from two episodes a week to one where it'll be an interview every other week and then a solo episode every other week. So those will be weekly episodes, but uh, it'll only be an interview every other week, which would take some of that pressure off the editing as well. So we'll just, uh, all that stuff's going to be figured out on the fly uh, as we're going through this. And uh, I'll be sure to share that with you as, uh, as I figure it out. So uh, that is it for this week. Those are some of the goals I have. Uh, these actually last two here are kind of the, uh, the things I would like to get to if I have time. 
um, scheduling launch promo content and material. I kind of need to finish some of that, uh, creating the, the promo material first. And then I also want to look into challenges as a way of list building. And that's been something I don't really know anything about. I haven't done it before, but I think it could be a good option for both this and for Podcast Marketing Academy when the launch comes up um, in at the end of September. And so uh, my coach has been telling me that challenges would be a good fit for, for what I'm looking to do. So I'm going to try and do some research on that and see like if I can quickly come up with something that would be useful to people and uh, would also be a good way to engage them and get them onto my email list and, and all that kind of thing. So whatever I figure out about that, if I get to that this week, I'll be sure to share with you as well, because I think that a lot of podcasters could probably benefit from running challenges for their audiences as a way to grow their list. Last thing here before we sign off, I did want to address one comment that I got last week on uh, last week's video. And he had watched through, he said, uh, he watched through all the episodes, binged through all of them, which I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm impressed. I uh, didn't realize that uh, they were that engaging and I'm glad to hear it. Um, <laughs> so he listened through all the episodes or watched through all the episodes and kind of made the comment like, is, do you think this is a little over the top? Like, is this what you would actually recommend for the average podcaster? And I would say that, yes, this is definitely over the top and for me, you know, as someone who's in the podcast space, who, who teaches and coaches people on podcast strategy and launching and works with clients to help them get those results, this is, you know, how I would like to do it if I had full creative control and even I don't have the support that some of our client teams have when they have their own, you know, marketing teams or um, virtual assistants or things like that to take on some of the, the client side of things. Uh, I could probably do even more with a little bit more support on my own side, but I'm trying to bootstrap this right now. And so I do think that this is over the top for the average podcaster. Um, my goal with these videos is you can see more how I'm thinking about it and, and the thought process of things that go into it. And you can kind of look at this and be like, okay, I can do this, I can do this, that's too much work, I don't need to do that. Um, but just so you have an understanding of like, this is what goes into an actual launch if you're looking to do it, you know, to the nth degree kind of. And so that is, is my goal with these videos. I don't think that you should try to do all of this because if we're looking at how much time I'm putting into this on a weekly basis last week, 17 hours, um, that's a lot of time to try and find over, you know, this will be a 12 week launch and that's, it's probably every week is gonna be 10 plus hours. That is a lot of time to put into this and sure, of course, like not everybody has that. I totally understand that. So um, do not feel like pressure, like this is the only way to launch. I hope that you take away from this. Here are some ideas and you can take what works for you, take what you have the bandwidth for and you know, disregard the rest or work on some of that stuff at a later date. So uh, that's how I would approach this. And uh, thank you so much for leaving the comment. And if anyone else has any questions or comments or anything like that, please let me know in the comments for this video or any of the previous videos. And I will be more than happy to respond to them on a upcoming uh, launch diary video. All right, until next week, until next week, until next week, uh, take care and I will see you then. Bye.